Welcome to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel, where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. I think they're swarming. What do you think? Well, good morning, y'all. It's uh, 3.06 p.m. morning for me, though. I've been burning the candle at both ends and down the middle. Mr. Ed called me this morning about 8.30, woke me up. Says, uh, sun's been up for four hours. <laughs> I know he's lying. I don't know what time the sun comes out because I'm not up then, but I don't think it's 4.30, is it? I got up, ate breakfast, went right back to bed. I was, I, I've been... I've been working bees till midnight every night for I don't know how long. It's catching up to me. I had to get some sleep. I'm headed to do another hive removal right now. Got a house that's built in 2015. It's, it's uh, spray foam insulated. Guy called me and says, I got bees doing something in my house. There's yellow stuff all over the ground. I said, all over the ground. I said, are the bees on the ground? No, the bees are up over the entryway. I said, oh, that's, they're chewing your insulation out. What? I said, yep. If it's, if it's yellow stuff all over the ground, look at it. I bet you it's expanded foam. He said, yep, sure is. So I went over and looked at it and uh, put a game plan together. Just left Home Depot getting some more supplies. I'm headed over to tackle that one. I'll probably have it finished about six or seven just in time for sunset so I can catch all the foragers coming back in. And that's what we're doing, so let's go get on it. Also got one out here later on in the week. Miss, me and Mr. Ed's gotta tackle that one. You'll see it. Big gigantic doorways. <laughs> About to fall down. V groove ceiling. I gotta pull that out. I've never been able to pull this stuff out without breaking it, so he already knows we're gonna do damage. When he called me, asked me about bees putting yellow stuff on the ground, I was like yellow stuff. And he kind of described it and I said, oh, that's insulation. That's the expanding foam that they're chewing out of his house. House was built three years ago and it's all foam insulated, so uh, they're making space. First, I'm gonna drill a hole and scope them, and, but they've chewed out enough insulation. It's just the wind's blowing it. So it's 3.30 p.m., I'm just getting started. And part of the reason for that is that this is the east facing side of the house. If I'd have done it this morning, the sun would be on me, cooking me, because it's kind of hot today. But the sun's on the other side of the house now. Got a good amount of shade. And there's a little bit of a breeze in here. They're already trying to get me. <laughs> that one got me in the thumb. I don't know how much good video I can get because that's way up there and there's nothing to hang a camera off of. I went ahead and smoked them a little bit. Air's not moving too much up there. Down here on the ground is a really good breeze. Up there, it's stale air. It's gonna be hot. Let's add another level of difficulty. Try not to suck up all that expanding foam dust. <laughs> this makes it even hotter. Looks like this is the only reason they got in right here is a loose piece of trim. I don't know if it didn't get nailed tight or if it just fell. But they went in under that. Just letting the smoke clear a little. Man, 
those guys that train with with uh, air restrictors on, I don't know how they do it. Just working with these things on is tough. First board down, we're into the hive. A lot of white comb. That's about a four inch gap there. I gotta take one more board down. I wish I didn't have to. I did. I was able to save that other one without totally destroying it. It's got a it's tongue and groove, so I broke the groove edge of it, but it wasn't something you couldn't patch. Hopefully I can get this one down in even better shape because it's not against the wall. This is how those boards come out, but you can see that's the back side. That's the back side of the groove edge. Got two little pry marks right there, easily patched and restained. And so th that board can be reused. It's the last board in the set. Somebody could just nail it. Don't even need the groove on it. Before I start cutting the hive out, let me give you a quick tutorial. I want you to look at how this house is insulated. It's all expanding foam. They didn't miss insulating this spot. All that was expanding foam. It's all been chewed to the wood. They're steady working on chewing that foam and carrying it out. So when people try to block a hive entrance with expanding foam, or block a space where the bees have been before, they're just gonna come right back because they make really short work of this stuff. They already started on this side so they can move over a little. This space here is too tight for them. They wanna grow. Got a little bit of honey in it and a little bit of pollen. I got a bucket up here tied to the ladder so I don't have to go back and forth carrying comb down. shot that quick little video for myself just so I could see how these columns are built if there was a, a cap on them or if they're hollow all the way to the ground and they are hollow all the way to the ground these are not structural supports they're just purely decorative so I got to be careful with these next ones a soft comb um, I already dropped one but I was able to catch it and, and drag it back out if I drop them then there's bees in the bottom of the column and Sometimes, especially if you drop it with a queen on it, they'll stay down in the bottom of it and, and keep on working. I've seen that happen a few times. Where not not where I've dropped comb, but where a colony has built in a space that got hot or whatever, and a piece fell with a queen on it all the way to the bottom. Matter of fact, I have a video of one. I think I called it uh, double queen hive with a question mark or something. Uh, Old queen will stay in the bottom, top colony will make a new queen off of the brood 
and don't want that situation here, so I gotta be real careful not to drop any of that. Got a lizard over there checking us out. Yeah, he's been out getting him a B meal, I think. So from uh, here on out, just gotta be real careful not to drop combs. And then it's just a matter of collecting the rest of the bees. There's not a lot of comb left in there, I don't think. It looks like maybe three more pieces. Back the bees, start running them out. They're kind of scattered right now, but give them time to cluster back up, hit them with the vac, and hopefully be gone before sunset. Hey, does anybody else's truck leak honey when they park on a hill? <laughs> it's not rear end oil. It's honey. last of them had to sit down there and let them cluster up for about a half an hour there's all over the place about to vac these pull that piece of comb and go home it's mass hysteria Well, 
I got the queen on this last big pull and I know it because when I turned the back off they were really loud they kind of were wandering and they, they were much more subdued much more laid down earlier and that's not the reason they're running right now but I just sprayed some repellent down in this column all these were hanging out down where I couldn't reach them I could hang my cell phone over the side and video and see where they were I just couldn't get to them so I had to use my little tricks on them some candy and some a couple queen cages and uh, got these bees from last night still in the cage I'm not gonna release them probably until this evening I'm just feeding them some queen candy and give them a little bit of something to drink it's just straight water no sugar water. It's kind of like holding package bees. I got home real late last night and didn't have time to put them up and I don't want them, I don't want these on my yard. These are going somewhere else. Nothing wrong with them. I just got the genetics I want here. Pretty clean ending there, right? Not so fast, big boy. You didn't get away clean on this one. Pretty often when I do these cutouts, I get a call back the next day going, hey, there's a whole bunch of bees here, what should I do? And come to find out it'll be a, a dozen bees maybe. That's not a whole bunch, that's just, that's not even a palm full. This guy called me back and said, hey, I got a whole bunch of bees still hanging out at the entrance at my front door, you know, can you come back? This is an hour and 20 minute round trip, hour and 10 minute round trip, and I was like, oh. I so said, what, what do you mean there's a whole bunch? Take a picture and send it to me. So he sent me a picture and it was like uh, half a basketball pile up on the side of the wall. I said, oh my gosh. So I went back over the following night and vacuumed them up. And what I figured out happened was what, what you, you could probably tell from the video, but I couldn't see anything in that column. I'm hanging my phone, reaching in about a foot and a half and then looking down to just to see in the column and I still can't really see anything. I pull my camera out and I look at it and say, oh, there's still bees in there, whatever. Well, after using the repellent and vacuuming, you can see how clean the space was. There wasn't any more bees coming up and I stayed there for half hour after dark, probably just waiting to see and nothing else was coming up. And so I left thinking everything's cool. Well, what happened was when I sprayed the repellent in that column, a bunch of them came up but a whole bunch went down too so they just went down to the bottom or, or lower in the column and hung out and those are the ones i missed so you know they don't always end as clean and pretty as you hope but in the end i left him with no bees because the second the second night i went back they were all grouped up actually on the wall outside and, and down from the space so i got every last one in the dark no flyers perfect clean job and then he was going to have his contractor close that space back up that was it done